Fox News alert now. President Trump is about to land in Kansas City ahead of a speech to a law enforcement conference shortly after announcing his choices for two critically important posts, one of those being attorney general. You're watching Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner. Here today, Melissa Francis, Fox News contributor Lisa Booth, Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlow, <laughs> and break it up, make it interesting, executive <laughs> vice president at the King's College in New York City, Brian Brinberg is here, always on time for the big news days. Welcome. Well, why wouldn't you want to be on time for this? You've got to be. There's so much to cover, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's Let's always a lot it. to cover. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Earlier today, and it's only noon on the East Coast, people. Ooh. President Trump said he will nominate William Barr for Attorney General and State Department spokeswoman Heather Nauert to be the next U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. The president calling William Barr his first choice since day one, and Heather Nauert would replace Nikki Haley if confirmed as U.S. ambassador to the U.N. John Roberts is live outside the White House with more. John, busy. Hey, Waver. Hey, good afternoon to you, Harris. Good afternoon to everybody else there on the couch. In picking William Barr, President Trump has picked someone with enormous experience, integrity, respect, and a lot of past bipartisan support, which is very important for the confirmation process. William Barr was Bush 41's attorney general back in 1991 to 1993. He took the job when he was only 42 years old. Classic underachiever. Here's what the president had to say about him this morning. When I went through the process of looking at people, and he was my first choice from day one, respected by Republicans and respected by Democrats, he will be nominated for the United States Attorney General, and hopefully that process will go very quickly, and I think it will go very quickly, and I've seen very good things about him. The big question, what impact, if any, might this all have on the Mueller investigation? Certainly, Barr could not be described as a Trump acolyte. As a Bush appointee, that puts him firmly in the realm of the establishment. But he does hold some of the same uh, points of view as the president. Last year, he wrote an op-ed in The Washington Post saying that the president made the right call by firing the former FBI director, James Comey. Barr wrote, quote, I know of no former senior Justice Department official, Democrat or Republican, who does not view Comey's conduct in July to have been a grave usurpation of authority. And here's what Barr told Neil Cavuto in May of 2017. Listen here. President uh, certainly is entitled to his choice as FBI director. And while I admire uh, Jim Comey a lot, I think he's contributed a lot to the country. He's enormous, enormously gifted. Uh, he crossed the basic line back in July. Barr also said last year that he saw more reason to investigate Hillary Clinton than any suspected collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Barr telling the New York Times in November of last year, quote, to the extent it is not pursuing these matters, the department is abdicating its responsibility. The other big nomination, Harris, that you mentioned at the top, that of Heather Nauert for U.N. ambassador. We were told weeks ago that she was offered the job. Then it all went quiet for a while. Now it's all a done deal. She's been the spokeswoman at the State Department since the days of Rex Tillerson. Former Fox News correspondent, of course, did not have a great depth of foreign policy experience prior to joining the State Department. And at the State Department, her experience has mostly been in communications, not policy, but she's a quick study, and both the president and the secretary of state like her very much. Here's what the president said about her this morning. She's very talented, very smart, very quick. And I think she's going to be respected by all. So Heather Nauert will be nominated for the ambassador to the United Nations. Now, an important difference in the job, as it is described to me now, um, it is currently a cabinet-level position with Nikki Haley holding equal footing to that of Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, even though the job of U.N. ambassador is under the auspices of the Secretary of State in the overall flow chart. But I'm told that it will go back to a sub-cabinet level position, much as it was in the Obama administration and in the Bush administration, the Clinton administration. You know, sometimes you would see 
Uh, John Negroponte out there for the Bush administration. But when it really got heated, you would see Colin Powell or Condoleezza Rice out there. That's the same formula this White House wants to use. Put it back to a sub-cabinet level position. So Heather Nauert would do the day-to-day -day business. But when you got into the really big, heavy stuff, you'd see Mike Pompeo out there taking the lead. Paris? Mm -hmm. oh, that's that an, interesting, uh, an interesting detail. Uh, John Roberts, I'll wave back. Thank you very much for all <laughs> the you. information. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, so, you know, as we look at this, let's start with, with William Barr. Yeah. And his relationship to the previous president, and 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 how that really plays a role. Well, I just think this is a credibility pick. I mean, talk about choosing somebody who has credibility on both sides of the aisle, especially in this week we're celebrating George H. W. Bush right. and his life. I mean, this is this is a good, smart, play it safe. Let's get the Mueller thing done. Pick for AG. And so I think he made a great choice on this, and I think he's going to have no trouble getting through the Senate. You know, Jessica, I was looking at some of the things that uh, Mr. Barr has written in the past, and, and with a different tone and tenor, obviously, but some of the same similar things to what the president has been critical about the Mueller investigation, and maybe even some with Matthew Whitaker. But again, the tenor and tone different, that experience playing a different role. But this really takes the air out of the balloon for investigations at the top for Democrats, because some were postured to really go after Whitaker. And, and as I've said all along, you may not have that. No, you may not have that. And we were talking about that the president would be smart to move this along quickly, which is obviously what he's now planned to do. Lindsey Graham was on the Sunday shows a few weeks ago talking about William Barr. He was always at the top of the list for the formal replacement there. In terms of taking the air out of Democrat investigations, I'm not sure that's how this is going to go. As you said, William Barr has been on record saying a lot of the things similar to President Trump and Matthew Whitaker bringing up Uranium One again, saying that's more worthy of investigation than collusion. The Democrats, all of them on the team of Robert Mueller, which, by the way, a lot of people have pointed that out. Yeah, absolutely. But if you look at the damage that has been done to Bob Mueller and his reputation, the latest polling shows that only 8% of Republicans uh, have faith in him and have approve of Robert Mueller. That is directly because of the president's attacks on him. When You, you, don't, have... you don't think it's the far and wide reach? You don't, you don't think Oh, I don't it's at all. all. I the... mean, Bob Mueller, if you talk to people who are actually holding office on Capitol Hill, they all have a lot of respect for him, and there are many Republicans on record right. siding with him here. So, yes, I think he will get confirmed, yeah. but it's not a slam dunk because of these comments about the Mueller probe. But I don't, he's not asking questions that are way outside the mainstream of questions. He hasn't been hard edged on this. He simply said the president is asking some good questions. No, he hasn't tweeted 13 that. angry Democrats, but he has said that there were too many well, left, uh, left wing donations. You don't from agree? There's a lot of legitimate that there are 13 angry Democrats. No, well, you know that that's not the point that I'm donations. asking. Oh, really? yeah. I'm, Jessica, I'm asking you about donations? how many Democrats are on the on. on I, I don't think that it matters. I think but that Jessica, people who have that fair. job can do their job. And Bob Mueller himself is a Republican. But Jessica, to be fair about public perceptions on Mueller, there was also exit polling from the uh, midterm election showing that 54 percent of Americans, majority of Americans, believe that the Mueller investigation is politically motivated. In part, that's because he surrounded himself with people that have donated to Democrats. Also, you have where the um, investigation prior to when Mueller took over, you have people like Peter Strzok leading it, who clearly had animus towards the president. So a lot of that feeds into that narrative outside of what no. President Trump has been saying about it. Also, um, Barr is not the only person that has concerns over the Russia investi investigation. Michael Mukasey, a former attorney general as well, has said that this investigation uh, should have never have started to begin with, that there is no justification for a special counsel to have gotten involved. So those viewpoints aren't unique. And also remember that the deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, is the guy um, who laid out the case to firing James Comey. So it's also not unique uh, to feel that James it's Comey not, should have been fired. For some of those reasons, Barr is, I think, such a clever pick because you have someone out there who, how could you possibly not confirm him when he's held the job before right. previously? Mm -hmm. um, how can Democrats take a shot at him? How can the never Trumpers take a shot at him when he is, you know, obviously a bushy? At the same time, he does appear to agree with a lot of the president's point of views, especially where he wrote about the usurping executive power and he's also addressed the issue of James Comey usurping the DOJ's power when mm -hmm. he stood up there outrageously and talked about what should or should not be pursued by the DOJ which was never his role so this was a very clever pick on the president's part good point uh, you know Barr served as attorney general during the first Bush administration from 91 to 93 so he I want to get your last thought on that 
No, I, I just, I love this pick. I think it's incredibly smart. And I also think you can try to tar and feather bar on some of the questions he's asked. The fact is these were very legitimate questions recognized by people, people of good faith on both sides of the aisle. He's not outside of reasonable. He's simply asking great questions. Exactly the guy you want sitting in this role. All right, we'll move on. Uh, meanwhile, we are awaiting the release today of more sentencing memos from special counsel Robert Mueller. For former Trump attorney Michael Cohen and former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort, including the prosecutor's recommendations for prison sentences for each individual, what they should receive, which could depend heavily on each person's cooperation with the special counsel's investigation. If we just kind of take a lesson from what we saw earlier this week uh, with Michael Flynn getting no uh, jail time or prison time, but said to sub. Uh, substantially have cooperated and they are due just days after Mueller submitted that heavily redacted sentencing memo on fired national security advisor Flynn saying he provided that assistance in several ongoing investigations and recommending that General Flynn again get no prison time. Your thoughts? Well, I, look, I'm, I, I don't mean to be the Debbie Downer here. I'm not as excited about what we're going to see from the from the Cohen memos today, not because there isn't necessarily something that could be useful there, but if you look at what happened with Flynn, this is going to be heavily redacted. What exactly are we going to learn beyond the fact that maybe Mueller was happy with the cooperation? Great, I'm glad you're happy with the cooperation, but what does well, that actually mean in terms of substance? We didn't get that with Flynn. I don't see why we're going to get that here. He wasn't happy with the cooperation of, of Manafort. We know that. Well, of course, and yeah. I think, yeah, one of the things that That's I'm blew looking up. forward to here is maybe we get some idea of where that relationship broke down because I want to know, as you have more and more people come forward and say that they were pressured to lie for the Mueller probe, I don't know if I believe, I need to see the evidence. I, mean, I need to see what we're talking about here. I would love some insight into that. When you look at the laundry list of things that Michael Cohen is accused of, I mean, my Lord, for an officer of the court, he has a very strained relationship with the law. But the problem He's is- He's got a strained relationship with the truth. Yeah. yeah. All of it. He does, but there is still no connection to any sort of crimes being committed in relation uh, to collusion. And I still find, I think this week's raised additional questions about the way that Flynn was treated because he really should have never been interviewed by the FBI to begin with. The Obama administration had concerns that he had violated the Logan Act, which no one has been prosecuted under ever, which is just a, a ridiculous assumption. Also, as the incoming national security advisor, he had every right to talk to Kislyak uh, about sanctions as part of the incoming administration. So it was ridiculous for him to ever been questioned to begin with. And this is something that Chuck Grassley has flagged and has been trying to get information from the DOJ and the FBI and has been met with resistance because they have refused to turn over the transcripts of the conversation he had with uh, Kislyak or the interview uh, 302s that the FBI had with Flynn because Comey had originally said that he never thought that Flynn had lied. So right. there are a lot of questions with that for me. So Jessica, as you look at us moving into 2019, okay, and you look at Democrats getting ready to take the House, where do you put the Mueller investigation ahead? I think it'll keep going on as it has with very few leaks and then big weeks like this one where you get a whole lot of information, a bunch of which will be redacted, as Brian pointed so out there. So do you feel that, that where Senator Jeff Flake is wanting to protect Mueller in the investigation, do you feel that that's necessary? Because you didn't mention that in your answer. You think it's going to go forward. I think it is going to go forward. I think that William Barr will let it go forward. That would be my expectation. I think that President Trump knows or at least has been advised by the lawyers on his team who are looking out for his best interests, which I don't think necessarily when Rudy Giuliani gets on the cable news circuit uh, is really helping him all that much, have said that you cannot stay in the way of this. He is running his counter story to the Mueller probe via Twitter. He's made that clear. And apparently there's 87 pages of a counter report already prepared. Bob Mueller will continue doing his work. I believe what happens today will matter. We will know exactly what Paul Manafort did in terms of lying to the special counsel. Mm. And Michael Even Cohen... Even if it's heavily redacted? I, I don't think you, so. I don't think will, there's a light you could hold that up no. to and see the letters behind it. I tried. You certainly have. Real quickly, Brian <laughs> last yeah, I agree with Melissa. That, that's exactly what we want to know. We're not no. going to get that. So we're going to be left with Manafort, yeah. a guy who's done stuff that doesn't seem to be re related to collusion, it, and Cohen, a liar. We're going to get memos wait, wait, on both of them. But if Where does there that are, get us? There are, can I just say to so the snow collusion point, there are emails 
talking about a deal with Trump Tower right in Russia, Ivanka getting in on who the designer or the architect should be there. You have rumors of promises of a $50 million apartment to Vladimir Putin, which is a violation of U.S. law to do I, that. I, I, I wouldn't I, go based on the rumors. Rumors. Well, well yeah. I, I'm just we, saying, we Mike, when also Bob those Mueller deals knows more happen. than we do. Yeah. It doesn't matter. He said he had no dealings with Russia. He was not trying to do any business. Then he tweeted, oh, it's like baby business or whatever he yeah. said. It's I, all inappropriate. You're running for president of the United States of America. And well, so what about Hillary Clinton we talk about taking the money from... Well, that, that, that is actually... Interestingly enough, yes. William Barr has talked about that as well. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. James Comey on Capitol Hill for testimony behind closed doors. So, what can we expect in the standoff between the fired FBI director and House Republicans? Plus, despite a positive jobs report, Wall Street sharply lower right now amid fears of a trade war with China. How the arrest of a top Chinese executive could throw those talks off track. Stay close. This program.